We do. And I'll show, remind me and I'll show you how to get there um, when we're done. Um, there should be a lot of COVID um, programming left on there. Um, when we were shut down, a lot of us were doing programming from home. So that should be on there and there should be other activities on there too. Yeah. All right. I thought there would be a couple more people and they may chime in. The Kentucky Room folks were going to pop in in just a second. Okay. So next to cemeteries, <laughs> newspapers are my next favorite thing to research. You can find out so much from newspapers. There's all my contact info on the bottom there. If you should ever need to contact me or just call the branch, Tate Street Library and we will help you. Okay, newspapers. A lot of people use ob newspapers for obituaries, but then they forget to look for all the other good stuff. Small town newspapers, pre -HIPAA. You've got births. You've got people in the hospital. You've got them telling you why people are in the hospital. You've got marriages, engagements, anniversaries, especially the big ones, the 50 years and the 60 years. Usually there are whole pages um, like today, feel good stories. And it was their social pages of the time, their Facebook. They are going to talk about who is coming. You need to run and get water. Are you OK? <laughs> okay let's see if I can get into drip. OK. Um, just don't choke. <laughs> um, someone's come to visit or somebody has gone to visit or what they're doing. Who's had a picnic? Who's gone to the movies? Who's got a new car? Just a whole slew of social history for a community. They also tell you who's not paid their taxes. And I've got an example of that in a few minutes. Land transactions, because they have to publish them to make sure that that person owns the land and somebody's not going to come back and say, hey, wait, that's my land. Arrest records, even today, it will list who has been arrested and what they have been arrested for. And then you get the, you know, the news. Um, clubs, organization meetings, who has been elected as officers, just a whole slew of excellent information. So read the newspapers from 50 years ago. Don't just look for your obituary and be done with it. Okay. Ancestor Hunter, and I will go to his page live in a few minutes. He is an aggregator. He goes through and he pulls all kinds of content. It's all links. It's very little original sources. The bad thing is it is ad heavy and it will irritate you to no end, but the information is well worth it. That first handout with um, the brown uh, top there, that's where that came from. Next. Oh. Did you let David in? Yes. He oh, hey, Thank David. You. You're welcome. And David, I can send you the handouts too if you want the handouts. Okay. Thank you. Okay. This is David from the Kentucky Room. I've talked him into doing a program. Oh, he's on, he oh. is watching us. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, he's, he's hiding behind. Oh, there he is. <laughs> There's David. <laughs> All right. So this is what it looks like on his page. Oh. He lists it state by state, and then he's going to break it down, and he is going to list all the newspapers and give you links to where you might be able to find it. He does it by the title, and then in the next section, he does it by city. So it's well worth it to dig through all those ads. Okay. All right. Where to find newspapers? at the library. Um, the Kentucky Room does have microfilm of newspapers. University of Kentucky is the repository for Kentucky newspapers. They have had projects after projects um, to um, save the printed paper. They are on microfilm. The other handout is information about UK's um, microfilm. 
This summer, they have moved the microfilm down to the first floor. You do have to call, reserve a machine, and tell them what microfilm that you would like to look at so they can pull it and have it ready for you. Um, state and local historical societies or genealogical societies, the Kentucky Digital Library, Chronicling America, newspapers.com. That's the product that I use that we found your grandfather's great grandfather's obituary a few years ago. Um, I have this full subscription to that. It does cost, it's an ancestry product. Genealogy Bank does not cover the areas that I am researching, so I don't have that one. Newspapers Archive is also the same thing. Those three do cost money. Look at them to see if they cover the areas that you are researching. A new one is Internet Archives. More and more newspapers are being loaded to um, Internet Archives. Google Books also has a lot of newspapers. And the one that David and I love because we are from Virginia and we are researching in Virginia is Virginia, Virginia Chronicles. Come on down. Okay, so <laughs> thank you. I'm sorry. No problem. Gave me time to take a drink. Okay, so newspapers in the United States have been around six to sixteen hundreds, which is good news and bad news. Not all newspapers have survived. They're not online, so you're going to have to go to places like UK or to these small towns to look at the newspapers. And they're not going to be free, just like any genealogy resource. You may have to pay for them. But first, you want to check your local library or your society and see if they have an obituary index because that will help you greatly because you will be able to contact those libraries and they will be able to email you the obituary, even if they don't have the index. If you give them a person's name and a death date, they will maybe for free, maybe for a cost, will email you a copy of that obituary. Many newspapers have been OCR'd, which is um, optical character recognition software. So you have a computer deciphering what that means. So that's where that brown sheet comes in handy because it's going to tell you what letters you might want to substitute in there because uh, like here lately I have been working with the Russell County, Virginia newspapers and Born, B-O-R-N, is being indexed as BOM, B-O-M. So that's how I have to look for birth information by typing in B-O-M and a date instead of born. So examples like that. And it just gets worse the older the newspaper and the harder it is to read. <clears throat> and David, if you have any questions, give a shout. Heather's monitoring the tech chat. Okay, typesetting. This is old school. This is where they would go in and put in letter by letter on these trays, and this is how they would print the newspaper. If you go to YouTube and you put in learning typesetting, fascinating. Do you guys know Paul Gregory? Maybe yeah. Paul Gregory, for, who used to be with the Kentucky Genealogical Society, maybe not. This was his job, one of his first jobs with a local newspaper. And he had a whole sheet of type set up and he was taking it upstairs to the printer and tripped. <laughs> and millions of those little bitty letters went flying. Um, and unfortunately, it was a day that the head honchos were in town in the building and he was so embarrassed, you know, one of those days, am I going to go back to work or not? OK, so. Look for misspellings. My last name is W-A-L-D-O-N. 
but we are on Walden Street, W-A-L-D-E-N. We're the only Waldens with an O in town. I um, always thought I should move to Walden, just say I'd be Walden and Walden. Um, look for abbreviations. Um, William, W-M, instead of spelling it out, they are going to conserve space. Um, John, J-O-N, um, think about things like that. Um, I think I've covered nicknames in one of my previous lectures. And they are not going to go down to the next line when they've got a word, so they are going to hyphenate it. And that hyphen may not make any sense whatsoever. So Walden may be W-A-L hyphen, and on the next line, D-O-N. So you have to think creatively. And sometimes you just have to read the paper page by page which is not a bad thing. Okay, the Kentucky Digital Newspaper Program. And these are just some places where you can find newspapers. And if you guys shoot me an email, give me a call, come on in, grab your handouts there. Um, if you want to email me, um, I can share this uh, PowerPoint with you with no problem. I don't mind doing that. What's your email? Um, Jay. W-A-L-D-O-N at L-E-X for Lexington, P-U-B-L-I-B dot org. I am on vacation next week, so if you email me soon, it may not happen until I get back. Okay. Um, this is part of UK's newspaper program. They have put some of their newspapers online, but not all of them. So I would start here to see what's available before you go over to W.T. Young, where you're going to make your reservation with Laura Hall, who's in charge of the periodicals there. Um, I would start here. Um, and sometimes you do have to go to the small county libraries. So this is just the same information that's on that second handout. Um, I just wanted to put that in as a placeholder so that I would remember to say, look at that handout. It just talks about the newspapers at UK, um, the database, doing interlibrary loans. You can interlibrary loan um, newspapers from other states through our interlibrary loan department. Um, if you ever want to do that, give me. You do have to go downtown to view it because we don't have a microfilm reader here. But um, oh, it'll be on microfilm. It would be on microfilm. Um, but come visit me before we do that, and I'll look at other sources before we do that. Okay. I have a question. Uh huh. Um, up there, you, the email address you had for the UK database of newspapers. Mm -hmm. um, would we use that same one if right. we wanted uh, newspapers from another state? Um, you would go to the library's website, LPLs, and we can interlibrary loan it for you. So, what if I just wanted to contact them directly through? Mm -hmm. what, yes. What um, address would I? I'll have to get back to you on that one. Um, if you go. Um, and click on this, please make an appointment. I think that takes you to Laura's website, Laura's email, and um, she would be the person to contact. And that is the back side of that handout, I think. Yes. Their website is yes. crazy. I think it's getting <laughs> It all changes. Okay, so if you want to know if UK has a newspaper, you are going to go to their card catalog. And the Mountain Eagle over in Whitesburg is one of the newspapers I look at quite frequently. And it's going to tell you that it's at the periodicals desk. And it's going to have this call number right here. So this is the number that you want to make sure that you record. You want the title of the microfilm and the real number. But then you have to look at the dates, because if you notice, we have um, S-471, and we have S-217, and then we have 95 
five. So you're going to have to look down here at the bottom to see um, what reels you actually want in that time frame. Mm -hmm. um, forgot that this one I was listening to. It'll come back. It'll come back. Okay. And then. <laughs> yep, it is being taped. Uh, oh, the program is being taped. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, so, and if you put in like Letcher County newspapers, it's going to list all the newspapers that exist for that county. Question. Yes. Does this include newspaper student newspapers for from universities and colleges? Oh, I have never looked for those, so I don't know. Like Brevard um, Music Center in North Carolina yeah. there. No, these are only UK newspapers. Okay. Or, or Kentucky newspapers. They're not going to cover anything outside the state. Well, I mean, if I went to this mm -hmm. for this type of help in another yeah. state, yes. say North Carolina, I mm -hmm. wonder. I just have yeah. to check it. But right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Hopefully the school itself will have microfilmed their mm -hmm. papers yes but you have to remember that papers themselves don't keep a record of what they've written mm -hmm. so you don't call the herald leader to find an old article mm -hmm. they don't really that's not the business there. Right. um you have to and not everybody was microfilming everything mm -hmm. the U.S. Newspaper Project happened in the yeah. 70s and 80s, mm -hmm. yeah. and they had to find these old papers yeah. that were usually in, in archives, but mm -hmm. some were found in closets and basements mm -hmm. and attics. You know, people would call and, I guess, yeah. let the filmers <laughs> yeah. know what they had. Uh, now it's gotten a little better. There are companies that take part in it. Mm -hmm. The Kentucky Colonel, for instance, gets filmed well it used to get filmed no UK had its own microforms department mm -hmm. but now they do digitization instead yeah. so you might find it you you might not yeah no. but it's worth yeah. it to call the school itself or if there's a major university nearby maybe Brevard doesn't but the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill does. Yes. And I, I would contact actually Chapel Hill first if they have a big library school there. Yeah. And yes, yeah, the big university. Yeah. They'd probably be the archive for that state. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's great. And don't forget that the indexers who are indexing locally are not going to index things that came across the wire. They are only going to index local stories by local authors local writers. They are not going to do things that were sent um, AP, anything like that. Really? Right. Okay, so this is the Lexton Public Library's uh, genealogy and history request, and you can go in and you can request obituaries or lookups, um, and we'll go to their page live in just a minute. Um, and they give you examples of some of the things that is an appropriate request. They're not going to do your research for you. No library is going to sit there and do your research for you. They are going to answer a question. Um, search for an obituary for my uncle Robert, who died in 45. Um, is there a cemetery record for my aunt buried in Fayette County? Um, check the city directory. So specific answers that they can find quickly. Um, and LPL does do research for free. Um, other libraries, state archives, I have seen obituary requests that are up to $20 for an email of the obituary. So I just put it on the back burner on my list and um, check back in a year and see if it's been put online yet. All right, don't forget to look at Lexington Public Library's digital collection. There are some newspapers in there. There are city directories. There are club directories. There are church records. There are military records. Um, David, give me the title of the defense, uh, World War I defense. Council Board. of Defense. Council of Defense Papers. Mm -hmm. So that's an excellent resource if your ancestors served in the war. Um, it is online. 
Mm -hmm. But look at all those subcategories that are in there. And it's not just con Lexington stuff. It's Kentucky. We do limit it to Kentucky. I'm sorry. <laughs> and um, it is stuff that has been donated. It is stuff that staff have gone out and found. So all kinds of inf interesting info there. Is that for other states? Do they have that? It would just be up to the individual libraries or counties. But they might. They might. They might. Look at the public libraries in the area that you're researching. And that's World War I era? Or the Council of Defense? Yes. All right. And it's not just big libraries like Lexington. I've been with the library for 33 years. I think we're the best in the state. But Floyd County, a little teeny tiny county over here in eastern Kentucky, they have put all their newspapers online and they have put all kinds of photos online. They're not well indexed, but um, they are there for you to look at. Look at the library for the area that you are researching. Okay, chronicling America with newspapers starting in 1770. It goes through and it has, my trifocals are not working, um, 20 million pages of newspapers for you to look at. There is a listing of all the newspapers published in the United States from 1690. A lot of these are in the public domain, but not necessarily anymore. And public domain is up to 1925, I think. Um, so anything before that is in the public domain and can be used. I run into problems sometimes. The name of the newspaper is totally unrelated to the plan. Yes, exactly. Uh, my favorite website went away, so I, I was going to share it with you, but then it would get your hopes up and it wouldn't do you any good. So that's yeah. not organized yeah. by geographic area. Right. Um, what, night, up to 1925 is public domain. Okay. So four, I don't remember what did I put in there. This is newspapers for Lexington alone. It has 165 different newspapers listed. Some of those may only have one or two pages. Some of them may be several years run, but it's a good place to start. Is all this going to be totally different in Canada? Yes. <laughs> okay. okay. So just go to Alberta and mm -hmm. get their library yep. and Check. Yeah. Okay. Um, here is where you can put in your state and your county to see if you can find your newspaper for the area that you are researching. Okay. okay. Yes. Donna. Yes. I have a question. Uh -huh. um, I've never checked actually, but someone was asking about a Brevard newspaper. Yes. I mean, it's possible it could be on Chronicling America or it no? could be. Yes. Okay. Check. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Hear it. Okay. Check here for your Brevard papers. Check where? At Chronically in America, this website that we've got pulled up. Thank you, David. Never okay. hurts to check. It doesn't. So when you click on the paper, this is what you're going to get. And I'm sorry, that's really fuzzy and hard to read. But you're going to get the name of the paper, where it was published, what area it covers, the dates, um, the subjects. But then at the very bottom, if you click on holdings, it's going to tell you that it's at the Kentucky Historical Society or at UK um, or where you can go to find it. I don't think it's going to cover the digital resources, but this is a good place to start. Bullion searching. Okay. If you are looking for a name, do you guys know bullion searching ands, ors? Okay, so Chronicle in America has it laid out for you already. So if you put in Ben Franklin as a subject down here in this square and just put in any words with Ben Franklin, 
you're going to get 6 million hits. <laughs> but look at how many records they have added in the past four years. So, you know, there are very few things that were great about COVID, but it did allow companies to come in and work behind the scenes and get documents up for um, consumers. Um, you can put in with all these words, so not nearly as many hits. And with this phrase, you know, they added almost 10,000 records there. And then if you do it within five words, so if you're not sure if Ben G. Franklin or if it was Ben Franklin or Ben George Franklin, I have no idea what Benjamin Franklin's middle name was, but if you put it in there, it will pull up all those. Okay. Is that just for famous well-known no. people? Anybody. Okay. So it will also, if your ancestors are first generation, second generation, look in newspapers of their language, where they came from, from their home country. If you look at a obituary for somebody that was from Germany, the American papers may have a teeny tiny paragraph, but the German papers, the Irish papers are going to have usually long columns of information. And um, Chronically in America, this was just an example here that I pulled off, has almost... Um, well, 2,583 German newspapers. Yeah. And, you know, with Google Translate and other translate services, you can put in the document and it will translate it for you. You don't even have to fat finger them in anymore. Say that again? Fat finger? Or? No, okay. Google Translate. Google Translate. Mm -hmm. oh, how does that work? Google Translate, you can clip the article in the newspapers and swing by, call me, and I can walk you through that process. You can clip the article and then drop it into Google Transplant. Mm -hmm. And it it's not going to be perfect because no translating software is perfect, but you're going to get a good gist of what the article means. Is Google Translate in the app now? Yes. Uh-huh. At least I think it is. <laughs> yeah. So do look at the other languages. All right. So this is at the beginning, we talked about some paid for service. This is the one that I use um, just because it's covering the southwestern tip of Virginia, and that's where I'm researching. It's got the Kingsport paper going back to. 1917. So that's the paper I need. Okay. This slide the newspapers. If you already have an account ancestry, do you have access to this? Yeah. Okay. That's a good question. Okay. So when you have a subscription to Ancestry, and this is included, but there is a plus account for an extra something, 50 ish, 60 ish. Um, you can get the plus account, which gets you more papers and more newspapers, modern newspapers. We have the global, that there's something extra to get more newspapers. Right. Google uh, um, Newspapers Plus. You're Jonathan, welcome. Yes. Does the regular Ancestry subscription give you the actual text of the articles and newspapers? Yes. I've okay. got okay. I'm sorry, I had him turned down over here. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, it's been so many years since I've had, I've not had the plus, but I'm 99% sure that it is covered. Okay. I haven't had much searching newspapers, the regular one, without mm -hmm. having plus. Right. I think sometimes I get a citation, but then what? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so how come you gave it up? You're not doing research in that area? No, I still have this one. You don't have the plus, though. I do have the plus. I, it's been so long since I've not had the plus. I, got I don't know what the cost is on the regular non-plus. 
I listened yeah. carefully. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, genealogy bank is another one. Again, look at the area you're researching. Look at what these companies are covering to see if it's worth your time. Can't see very well. What did you spell? What did you... Genealogy bank. And the first one was newspapers.com. And then the third big one is newspapers archives. Um, and I didn't realize I still had the price in there. That price is from um, five years ago. And that's the one when I called to cancel it, they were not very nice about me canceling. But if it's the area that you're researching, yes. Okay. Newspapers, things that you can find. All right, this is one of my favorite finds. My husband's grandfather, great-grandfather, lived to be 110, and he wanted to be rebaptized. So this is Papa Charlie at the church with all the church members behind him being rebaptized in the creek. And then it goes on to talk about um, it had been baptized when most of us are during the childhood years. Um, it happened a century ago. Um, baptized by sprinkling but last weekend um campus lake beach um church saying um renewed his faith you know feel good stories and it's given me a glimpse of papa uh, charlie's um life there okay and that was um a whole page with another page this is my grandfather john dingus and if you've been in programs with me before you know a lot about my dingus line so this is his obituary we know that he was living in pound virginia and that he died at home on a sunday morning of an apparent heart attack that it doesn't say he was a coal miner but he had been a coal miner he had retired from the Fairfax County School Board, so I knew that he did not live in uh, Wise County his whole life, that they had gone north. I have the wife, uh, the name of his wife, Elma. I have his three daughters, Carol, Elizabeth, both the pounds, so they're living there. I have my mama, who's living up north. I have um, his two sons, uh, Uncle Gary and Uncle Brownie and it tells me where they're living. It tells me which of his sisters are still alive and his brother's still alive. It says he has 12 grandchildren and one great grandchildren and that he was being cared for by Baker Funeral. So that gives me lots of information that I need to research now, including going to the Baker Funeral Home to see if they still have their records. Okay. And don't look for newspapers. And this is where online resources have been a game changer. So that obituary was in the Kingsport paper. Pound is about 90 miles north of Kingsport. But the Wise County newspaper at that time was still a weekly. So everybody in this area of Virginia would have their obituary printed in the Kingsport paper. And that's why I love the Kingsport paper. So even though it was 90 miles, look in the surrounding counties for obituaries or stories about your ancestors. Okay. It's a long ways. I guess that. <laughs> no. And like I said, that's why online newspapers have been such a game changer for everybody. All right, so here is a fella who died in 1921. This is the Louisville paper. It's got his name, where he was living, his name, how old he was, what he did for a living. He owned the Shelbyville garage, and he died in his um, home after a two-month illness of Bright's disease. And Bright's is an inflammation of the kidneys. Um, it talks about his why widow but it doesn't name her that's the problem with us women 
they never give our name in a lot of resources. You know, we're always Mrs. John Dingus. We're never Elma Dingus or Elma Dotson. Um, it's, it breaks our heart. And I have seen obituaries where they don't even give her real name. She's always the wife of somebody. And that just tears me up. Yeah. And obituaries is your last hurrah. Make sure they write a good one. Um, <laughs> Funeral services, it tells you where the funeral service it is, um, where he's going to be buried. So now you can go and look and see if Grove Hill Cemetery has burial records. Okay, so here is another example of a newspaper. Departed this life on the 18th of this month. That's what that INFT means. Mrs. Craig, um, comfort of the Reverend Elijah Craig of Georgetown. So um, yeah. there's a whole bunch of Latin down there about um, using Ultima and, you know, I had five years of high school Latin and I don't remember any of it, but that was 40 years ago. Um, but there is that down there. No, no. Right? So, and then right below that is... This morning, after a short but severe illness, Mr. Joseph Smith, a student. So in print, watch out for those long S's because um, they look like an F, but those are really S's. And it's especially hard to read sometimes in old handwriting samples. Are you kidding? Yes. Okay, we talked about tax list. Here is the delinquent tax list for Jenkins um, in 1964. And at the very bottom, my grandfather owes $3.75. But this helps you put your ancestors in place and time and gives you a hint about their social economic status. Because there are some people there, um, well, that's a corporation that owes $30 in taxes. Um, there are people there that owe $16. There's people there that own $2. So that's just giving you a glimpse of what your ancestors might have, how wealthy they were or not wealthy. Okay. <laughs> Long gone. Okay. This is from the, um, also from the Jenkins paper, the Mountain Eagle in Whitesburg in 71. And this is one of those feel good stories. Um, large crowd gathers at the Free Will Church. Many out of state relatives visited family here for the Easter holidays. I don't believe I've ever seen so many Michigan and Ohio cars in the area. And then it goes down and talks about um, her holiday and how things were spent. Um, let's see, um, spending the holiday with me, Patty, um, Louise and little Matthew were my parents. Um, so lots of good information. It helps you, might help you give the name of a daughter or a son. It gives you place and time. And I have been told by more than one person that all the people who went north out of Eastern Kentucky would come home Friday night and it would be bumper to bumper coming down 58. And then late Sunday night, it would be bumper to bumper going back up north. But um, puts your family in social context there. All right. Um, here is military um, information from the Floyd County paper. Uh, Victor Walters, stationed in Seymour, Indiana, returned to his station Tuesday after a 14-day furlough where he spent with his mother. Um, so it helps put people in time and place. It shows military service because of the fire in 1973 that burned a lot of the military records from that time period. This is going to prove that Victor Walters, um, whose mother was J.E. Walters, J.E. is probably his daddy's name, um, was in the military. And it, it might be that one piece of evidence that lets you um, put the military headstone on their grave. Okay. And then somebody went to the picture show. 
All right, and there is a whole list of people who have been called up. Um, 81 men in this uh, paper were to report to the draft board for medical exams. And it just tells you what uh, branch they were in, where they were serving, and unfortunately, if they were killed in action or missing in action, it would probably list that as well. Here is the Kingsport paper. We talked about how it would include weddings and anniversaries. Um, here's an example of that. Births, um, they don't do that today, um, but it lists all the kids born on that particular day. This is in Floyd County. And then more social history going on. Hamburger prices are going up. Um, let's see, a steak, chopped sirloin was $1.39 a pound, um, with or without mushroom gravy. Uh, sirloin steaks, $1.99 a pound, regularly $2.59. Um, so just to get a little history, and I love this last one we've got. Look at the prices of these TVs from 1967, $499 for a 23 inch color TV. And if you did the inflation calculator, that would be $15,000 in today's prices. So yeah, I think we might have had one of those, you know, where you, the tubes would burn out and you'd have to go down to the hardware store. Yeah, I remember those as a child. All righty, guys, that is the PowerPoint. Let's see. Jonna. Yes. Some of the smaller towns would have like bankruptcies, divorces, yes. and it was like like an expectation that they would have all that stuff. Yes. You know, it was kind of weird. <laughs> there were no secrets in small towns. But well, we couldn't hear what oh, he said. Yeah, he. Uh, I, I did. Okay. Um, he was talking about how divorces and bankruptcies were also listed in small town newspapers, and you can find out all kinds of things about people. Very. Very. Okay. I. Mountain Eagle is one of my favorites for that. Mm -hmm. it, I remember once seeing a. Because I worked at UK in the newspapers and periodicals department for five years and they would run stories and this was in the 2000s things like you will never guess whose pickup truck was you know parked in front of so yep. and so's trailer and yeah. I, I, we just yeah. i love the mountain eagle that was yes. and that was when the publisher or the editor of the mountain eagle was i can't remember his name but he was kind of a, a character himself <laughs> and a very two of my aunties got speeding tickets and since they were the type of women who never did anything wrong. They were all divided. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So let's see. There is Crime in America. And this is the one that David and I like. Is anybody here researching in Virginia besides David and myself? No? Okay. I'm going to do a little bit yeah. not Yeah. Good stuff there. Um, this is... Um, papers. Just every state, if you could, I write um, Michigan Chronicle, North Carolina. Chronicle. Kentucky does not have one, and that's the only other one I have checked. Okay. So um, I could just check. Mm -hmm. I was, hey, John. <laughs> uh huh. It just dawned on me probably the Family Search Wiki. The Family might Search list Wiki. The, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, family Search. Wiki. Okay. The Family Search is a free website ran by the Church of Latter day Saints. And um, their wiki is anything and everything you ever wanted to know about a place Lexington, Kentucky, United States. Let's see if that does it because that was really bad entry. Okay, so here is Fayette County, and when we click on that, it's going to give me a description of the county, um, the courthouse, what years they started keeping records, 
um, when the courthouse burned down, when the boundaries changed, because everybody in this room knows, except maybe not, uh, Kentucky was originally three counties that has been subdivided down into 120 counties. Um, it talks about the, set the merge between the city and the county, yes. And then all the um, uh, small areas, uh, did, 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 Bible records, a church records, church records, courthouse, scroll, keep scrolling, keep scrolling. This is marble. Yes, yes. Maps, 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 military, newspapers. And then it's going to give you some information about the newspapers for Fayette County. Um, and that's called Family History. Family Search Wiki, W I K I. Oh, that's. I thought it's family. I mean, I thought Fam it. Family Search. It's ran by the Family Search, which is a Church of Latter day Saints website. So, what do I type in if I want to get to it? Family Search Wiki. Thank you. You're welcome. You have to make an account for that. Yeah. Oh, I'll go do the test. Okay. Yeah. So Jonna, yes. One, I'm sorry. One more question. Uh -huh. It's <laughs> early on. You mentioned a, a website I'd never heard of. I think it was called like Find Your Ancestor or Find Your History or something. Find your near the beginning of your presentation. It was. I could be saying it totally wrong. Um, oh, Ancestor Hunter. Ants. That's it. That's it. Like I said, it is so ad heavy, but it is a fabulous website. So if you go to re um, okay, so I've gone on to Ancestry Hunter now, and you go to resources, come down here to newspapers, and make the ads go away, and it's going to go through here, and it's never quite the same path at the same time. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo, because I just had it. Newspapers. Newspaper links. Maybe it's newspaper links. Yes, that looks better. So here are all the states. And let's get down here to Kentucky. Are you seeing that, David? Mm hmm. Yes. Okay. And we scroll down. And um, if you get on his blog and subscribe to his blog, he will send out updates when he goes through because he does update these quite often. No, I don't want you to do that. So it's going through and it's going to list the newspapers by community. Community, community. And these are all links to their newspapers. And then we've got Google News Archives, and so we've got more links to newspapers. And then this is that um, website that I shared with you earlier, the um, Kentucky Digital Archives Program. So you can click on that. Let's see, Frankfurt, Frankfurt. Let's get to Lexington. And... Um, I always hesitate to click on links when um, I haven't done it before. So this one is online um, from 1904. And you never know what you'll find in there. Um, he oh, has so Google News Archives. Is that, and before that, Ancestry Hunter is what we type in. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Ancestor Hunter also has the CCC papers. Um, he has the camp newspapers. Um, What's the CCC? Civilian. Civilian. Oh, yes. Oh, from, the, yeah. from the WPA. It was a, a, another form of projects during the Depression. Thank you. I knew the moment I said it, I would not come up with those initials. Um, <laughs> Close to my hand. So they have uh, what kind of records from CCC? Just uh, Camp Life. Mm -hmm. Camp Life, who was in a camp and what they did and maybe what they ate and what movie they saw and who's new to the camp and who's leaving the camp. Okay. Okay. 
Um, let me see where, please make an appointment. Um, oh, it doesn't give Laura's email. It just, when you make an appointment, you're going to make an appointment with Laura. Um, let's see. Oh, that was just me logging on to the event. That is the Floyd County newspaper website. And their history collection. Um, let's see. Floyd County Times. They have got it going back to 1930. And remember these small towns. They're going to serve the surrounding counties, just not your county. So if you are living in Johnson County or in Pike County, look at the Floyd County paper to see. Remember, a lot of these were every three days or just weeklies, so they would have sent it to the big papers in town. Okay. Um, this is the Lexon's website. Um, to get to the Kentucky room, you're going to do browse. And I would do, even though that says genealogy and history, don't go there. Go to research and learning. And then scroll down here to genealogy and local history resources. And this obituary database will only give you obituaries from about 83 to present. It doesn't go much farther back than that. 19. 1983. And it doesn't um, have and, like, like if you look for articles on there, I mean, it's good, but it doesn't have the pictures. Yeah, it doesn't have pictures. Sorry. Um, ancestry, which you have to use in this building. There's the digital archive link, the local history. Um, that was a project, a um, volunteer project where they were going in and indexing the papers and it's still available. It's not been updated since 2007 because most papers are indexing are online these days. Okay. Um, let's see that we've talked about. Make an appointment. We talked about that. Alrighty, guys. I think that's all I've got for you. Questions? Oh, Can I do anything? Yes. Uh -huh. What? Would be an archive I could check to see. Uh, I'm sure the American military must have huge archives. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, and I, my father served in World War One. Mm -hmm. so. Yes. Um, now, all those records would have. Um, say, loose fire in night. 1973. Okay, so the National Archives is the federal repository, and they're going to have almost all of the military records. Okay. Okay, so um, anybody that was in the Army from 1912 to 1960, about 80% of those records burned. Yeah, okay. burned. Big fire, St. Louis burned for days from 1912 to 1960. But these are the discharge papers. Oh, discharge. Discharge papers. Well, that's going to include their military history and all that good stuff. Service personnel were supposed to go to their county clerk of the town that they were living in when they were discharged and give them a copy of those discharge papers. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. Uh, I would say probably half of them did. Um, so well, you might try that. Look at the town to see. Right. Mm -hmm. um, if they were in Kentucky, there is a military pension that if you joined the military, um, up until Korea that you were entitled to a state pension. And those records are at the Kentucky Department for Libraries and Archives. Okay. 
No. It's been uh, probably five years since I searched newspapers. Is it worth doing it again? Yes. They add stuff. Well, they pick up newspapers and then they lose their licensing for other newspapers. So it's constantly shifting. And Ancestry is the same way. They sign these contracts and then they lose the contracts. So it's always worth double checking. And I am one of those really bad researchers. Everybody tells you, keep a log and go back. Oh, this isn't my personal computer. Um, I have funeral home Sundays where I go in and check the funeral home. I'm up to 55 funeral homes that I check. And it's not just Sundays anymore because it's too many um, to see what cousins have passed away that week. Ooh. Yeah. And I have spreadsheets and I have um word files where I have just copied and put everybody who has died in that funeral home that year in one file because you guys have heard the stories before that so many of my family all stayed within a 10 county area starting in Kingsport Tennessee going up into Floyd County Kentucky so I have just looked at all the funeral homes that I can find between here and there had a large number because of that I had 12 I have a lot of cousins. I have a lot of aunts and uncles. Yeah. Well, You're welcome. And, um, uh, and um, I'm sorry, you guys are new, but I'll just remind everybody that you can do a book of librarian appointment with me or David or anybody in the Kentucky room um, for genealogy help. And you can do book of librarians appointments for um, tech help, anything like that. But you can call us and we can set up an hour appointment and we can work on your family history or learning how to use your Kindle or how to write a resume, all kinds of good stuff. Thank you. Yeah. So all right. Make a donation. No, just come hang out with me. It's free. Yeah. Yes. All righty. Did you stop recording us? All righty, guys. None of us is a guy except. Uh, and it I, 